Hi everyone, uh, this is Uza Liner, manager from the marketing admissions team from HKUST MBA. Uh, I'm currently taking care of most digital media and admissions for our MBA programs. My name is Sachin Dipnis. I'm a senior executive director at the HKU Business School. Uh, I look after all the aspects connected to program, career services, alumni services, uh, marketing and admission. My name is Grace Nam. I am the executive director for CUHK MBA program. I look after the program operation, including marketing and admission, student learning and development, career management, alumni engagement, etc. So there are several key reasons why uh, students should actually consider taking an MBA in Hong Kong. Firstly, Hong Kong is one of the largest financial hubs in the world. There are a lot of career opportunities here in this city. And uh, some multinational companies, they actually have regional office or even headquarters based in Hong Kong. Secondly, Hong Kong has a very flexible and talent-friendly visa policy. For all non-local full-time students, once they finish their study, they can apply for a visa for up to 12 months without any conditions, but then they can work in Hong Kong. Thirdly is Hong Kong's unique business position in mainland China. In 2019, Hong Kong takes up 55% of the realized foreign direct investment of mainland China, which is quite huge. So it also means that there are a lot of business opportunities here. And finally, I would say Hong Kong is a very safe and expatriate friendly city here. Uh, both English and Chinese are the official languages used in Hong Kong and most people would understand, uh, understand English. And for example, ladies like me, if I want to go out at late night uh, in terms of safety, uh, it is still fine um, as long as I you know, make a lot of like, common sense. So I would say Hong Kong is a very safe city to live in. It's similar to why the companies are attracted to open their offices or do business in Hong Kong. Uh, it would be similar reasons because uh, Hong Kong is a great business hub, uh, not just a financial hub, but a business hub. That means the kind of opportunities they're going to get in Hong Kong, the kind of learning they're going to get in Hong Kong is going to be tremendous because MBA is truly a journey. It's an experience. Uh, not just confined to what happens in the classroom, just not confined to what the core curriculum is, but beyond that. And that's where the Hong Kong as a city, as a destination comes in, because Hong Kong has this uh, such a wonderful set of people from all over the world. It's also very diverse in terms of the industries, in, the, in terms of the, the... So that means that the kind of people students are going to interact with are of a certain level. So the learning is tremendous. So which also means as a school, we are also able to bring in those resources for the students, which probably if we were located middle of nowhere, is sometimes difficult. Uh, at the same time, Hong Kong continues to grow. Hong Kong is one of the only places now in the world where after you finish your MBA, uh, you get a work visa. Uh, there are very few places around the world which has this kind of arrangement. This also showcases that Hong Kong is open for talent. It also showcases we want to retain the talent we are, we are training. And I think this is a very important consideration for MBA students. They, uh, they are choosing a destination because they probably want to work there. So all these factors, they, they come together uh, and that's why we believe that Hong Kong is a great destination uh, to be in for doing the MBA. In Hong Kong, we have four pillar uh, industries that provide great opportunities for employment and for uh, business opportunities. Like, for example, financial services, uh, among the 100 global banks, we have 70 of them have an office in Hong Kong, which provide great employment job opportunities uh, in financial services and related industry. And in terms of tourism, is the other major industry in Hong Kong. And even though during uh, the pandemic time, it is the hard, very badly hit industry, but in normal time, Tourism is a great industry that provides a lot of uh, employment opportunities. And as I just mentioned, Hong Kong's prior location at the heart of Asia, and we are a bridge that bridge 
connect east with west and we provide great platform for trading and logistics. And for long term, long time, Hong Kong is a logistics center and opportunities in e-commerce, in logistics, etc. Uh, we provide a lot of opportunities and that especially for international candidates and they can find great opportunities in this area. And for recent years, Hong Kong developed a lot of business in innovation and technology. So in this area, it provides great opportunities in terms of how we can facilitate uh, financial services in terms of technology and how we can uh, innovate business in terms of smart, uh, smart living, uh, in terms of biotechnology, etc. And nowadays, fintech, those areas also provide a lot of opportunities. And in terms of uh, in the region, Greater Bay areas, Hong Kong is the heart for uh, entrepreneurship as well. And we do have a lot of policies to support entrepreneurship. And Hong Kong also uh, intend to build into uh, the hub for family business in Hong Kong. So opportunities in this area, people can also look into. So those are some of the great uh, major industries in Hong Kong that international students, after they graduated from the program, they can consider and a lot of opportunities that can help our students to settle down in Hong Kong. I would say in terms of the wide spectrum of employment industry here in Hong Kong, technology is definitely picking up really fast. Um, so for example, for the HK USD MBA programs, for the class of 2019, 33% of students landed jobs in technology. Uh, actually, in the past when we could still fly, uh, Facebook would have someone flying from the Singapore office to our Hong Kong campus to recruit our students. Um, I would say in terms of like COVID situation, there are quite a lot of you know cities also recovering, but Hong Kong definitely is one of the best among those. Um, for our Intech 2020 class, 93% um, of students actually landed internships um, only, you know, less than one year after they joined the MBA program. And uh, in terms of, you know, a bigger scope uh, for Asia, uh, in general, half of the class of our students would land job in Hong Kong, but then rest of them would be in other key cities in Asia, for example, Singapore, Malaysia. So I think these are like a whole, you know, um, career placement packages um, that gives benefits to our students to land jobs, not only in Hong Kong, but also Asia. Some of the challenges would be that Hong Kong is an uh, extremely fast-paced city. So, you know, you, you need to make sure that your personality and your career goals are aligned uh, to this kind of uh, work culture or this kind of uh, the way the Hong Kong moves. Uh, so definitely that's something which we always tell our MBA students that be aligned to the city, be aligned to that particular region in terms of the culture, in terms of understanding the local know-how. Uh, I mean, that is very important. So uh, say, for example, if you come here and you believe that, hey, what happened with me in the XYZ country, I'm just going to copy paste that that's not going to work in Hong Kong. So you need to really understand the local culture, local beliefs, local values. And that sometimes could be challenging, but if you're able to do that, Hong Kong could be a great destination. Particular to Hong Kong, I do not see huge challenges to study here. But of course, every different place has their very unique features. In Hong Kong in general, Futa and Bay program, the duration ranges from 12 months to 18 months. Some students, if they decided to complete the program in one year, then they have to really prepare for very intensive learning. At the meantime, they uh, will be exposed to a lot of uh, networking events and a lot of uh, student-driven activities, which will make them very busy. And so uh, our students, if they would like to choose to study a program in Hong Kong and look for opportunities right after program completion, uh, they have to really plan ahead in terms of uh, how to balance study, 
networking events, activities, etc. In order to make the most out of the program. Hong Kong is one of the most expensive cities to live in and we take that into consideration. And our intention is to uh, bring in the most talented and the smartest student into the program. And we do have a mechanism to support students who are in financial needs to study in our program. So that's why we provide very generous scholarships, which are on both merit-based and need-based. So any student candidates, if they consider themselves very strong candidates, they feel free to come to our mission officer and discuss their financial needs. And we are trying our very best to support candidates with the aspiration to excel and do well in the MBA program. But in the meantime, to give back to community. And this is on the scholarship side. On the other hand, uh, in terms of uh, student living, student housing, and we do understand housing is extremely expensive in Hong Kong. So uh, one thing excellent about CUHK is we have a lot of on campus housing. So we, we, every year, we reserve on-campus housing to our MBA full-time students. And those on-campus housing are very nice, uh, but at the meantime, are uh, very much affordable. So those are some areas we want to make sure um, our students are able to uh, finance their program and they don't need to worry too much about the financial burden. I agree that Hong Kong's living cost is high, uh, but when you look at you know daily expense, I would say it's actually quite similar to other big cities in the world. Uh, but in terms of living, uh, we do have student team having connections with uh, some you know agencies that they help our students to look for shared flat options near the campus. And on the other hand, for full-time MBA uh, prospective candidates, uh, we do offer very attractive scholarships um, that covers up to 100% of the tuition fee. So hopefully this will encourage, um, you know, full-time MBA candidates to come to Hong Kong to pursue their MBA study. So the protest happened around one to two years ago. Um, I would say the protest has come to you know a dying down situation here in Hong Kong. Uh, but even during time of protests, we suggested our students to stay away from those protest areas. Um, I guess it's like you know uh, protests happening in other countries in the world. Um, basically, our students had their their study um, as usual, uh, but some of the classes were taught online. Like now we're having in COVID. Uh, but I would say uh, after all, Hong Kong is a very safe city. So um, again. And as you rightly said, uh, the protest is old news. That was 2019 and a bit of early 2020. Uh, but we are one and a half years away from that phenomena. So even at that point of time, uh, in Hong Kong, the disruptions were only connected to localized area where probably such demonstrations were taking place. Uh, it never affected the whole city. It never affected anything beyond that localized area uh, where certain disruptions were taking place. And I think that's where the really the strong, uh, well, this is spirit of Hong Kong comes in, uh, where you know Hong Kong still thrives in spite of like every city has its ups and downs. So naturally, we also have gone through that. Uh, but at the same time, we have emerged even stronger. So even at the peak of uh, uh, these demonstrations, it was very localized. It never spread uh, to the extent that uh, disruptions happen in uh, uh, our MBA students' studies or in classrooms or in campus, not at all. And that's a great question because, you know, we have, we have been, as a school, our, our positioning is that if you want to thrive in Asia, not just Hong Kong, uh, then um, coming to Hong Kong and coming to HKU would be great because how do we support that uh, on various ways? Uh, one, uh, the actual course material. So we 
actually develop case studies connected to Asia. So there are two types, there are two angles to it. One would be multinational corporations, but we focus on their Asia business. So we will pick up these companies, how are they looking, doing in emerging markets in Asia, or how are they looking, doing in bigger markets like China and India in Asia. And at the same time, we'll also do a lot of case studies connected to uh, companies emerging out of Asia and becoming multinationals. So that way, the course material is, becomes a very important, uh, I would say, component of how we teach them what's happening in Asia. Second is uh, our professors uh, have a lot of experience. Uh, they're doing their consulting work. They're doing their research connected to, to Asia. So a lot of their data points, a lot of the information they are working on is connected with Asia. So they bring that element back to the class. And then connecting back to my first answer, where I talked about the resources available in Hong Kong, we also have adjunct professors uh, who typically teach certain electives. These are the people who are running large corporations in Asia. Uh, they are the regional directors, they are the regional partners in this part of the world. And they are able to bring in that experience back to the class. So a combination of all these leads to our students really learning how to do business in this part of the world. We, we truly, truly believe that what probably works in San Francisco or Frankfurt may not actually work in this part of the world. And that's why it's very important that people who are studying, who are doing the MBA with us, understand the nitty gritties of how to do things in this part of the world. So that's how we prepare. And probably the last thing connected to that would be uh, that we actually mix our full-time and part-time students for certain classes. And our part-time MBA students are working executives in this part of the world. They are running uh, businesses there in this part of the world. So they are able to bring in their daily experiences to the class. Uh, which our international students can benefit from. So that's how we, we prepare them for Asia. Uh, we do have uh, different things helping our students to come on board and launch their career in Asia. First is a very practical and flexible curriculum. Uh, HKUST MBA actually has one of the most flexible curricula in Asia. Uh, we have some courses that's more dedicated to you know business in Asia. Um, in terms of electives, we have 60, but we have some courses, for example, doing tech business in China and Asia. Um, making deals across China and Asia and other courses that's more dedicated for this part of, of the world. And apart from this, uh, actually part of the curriculum, we encourage our students to go for internships, um, which they are credit bearing. So all these gives our students some real life and very practical um, experiences on, you know, launching their career in Asia. And the second thing is uh, we have a very uh, close-knit and strong network of alumni in the region and all over the world. Uh, for all new students, when they come to HKUST, they can join a network of 6,500 alumni in Hong Kong and other parts of the world. And more importantly, we uh, actually launched a virtual platform since uh, COVID, uh, which is HKUST Virtual Alumni Hub. Um, basically, for students all over the world, they can connect each other on this uh, virtual directory. For CUHK, and we are one of the oldest business school and to offer MBA and business education. And we do have a lot of experience to help our students to uh, learn the best practice in Asia and to do well in, in uh, doing business in Asia. So it built into a few elements. First of all, the curriculum design. So in our curriculum, we have courses and uh, to uh, uh, teach elements and doing business in Asia. And like for example, family, family business in Asia, macroeconomic and especially in Asia context, etc. And also uh, in our uh, courses, it is a lot of case-based learning and we bring in a lot of Asia cases to uh, share the best practice with our students. And also we do have very practical learning program. It is called, it is a course called Business Practicum where our students 
uh, work together with companies to uh, help identify problems, propose uh, proposal to solve the real business problems. So those are real life cases and also an opportunities for our students to learn the business, but at the meantime to work together with business executive and to come up with solution to help the business. And we also have a lot of company visits, uh, especially in Hong Kong at this cover moment. But at the meantime, we also do virtual company visits to get to understand company culture and industry insights, as well as uh, how we can our students fit into different roles and positions. I think for students uh, before they come to Hong Kong, uh, after all, Hong Kong is a very multinational city. Uh, it should be quite easy for them to to live and work here. But uh, our MBA program is also very multinational, so which means you have a lot of uh, you know stimulations from different cultures or from people from different backgrounds. So I would suggest them to stay uh, very open-minded um, to look for opportunities not only on your design industry, uh, but also on other industries or even other locations. It is going to be very intensive learning. As I just mentioned, it is basically one year or one and a half year program. So our students who are uh, arriving to Hong Kong, um, I would suggest them to prepare themselves for a great deal of hard work mentally. And they will have, you will have classes, uh, lectures, but a lot of networking events, student organized activities. So, everything will keep you so busy and at the meantime there are a lot of professional workshops and more interviews and internship opportunities preparation etc so it is going to be very busy life in hong kong one of the most important things they probably need to know is that hong kong is open for talent and that's why uh, they get their student visa converted into work visa without any issue. In fact, we have a proper system in place where we encourage uh, students who graduate in Hong Kong to stay back in Hong Kong, to contribute back to Hong Kong. And I think this is really something the students need to know because that can make their life easier, which means that the companies do not have to sponsor students. Uh, our students can have the visa on their own accord, which also means that it's easier to change jobs because the visa is not connected to your employer. The visa is your own visa. And this also means that it's easy to start an entrepreneurship venture in Hong Kong because you have the visa on your name. Or you can work for a startup uh, because again, the startup doesn't have to sponsor your visa. So I would say this is really a critical element the students should know before they come to Hong Kong.